Welcome to eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies in the Book of Genesis. For more studies and information, visit ebiblefellowship.org. And now, with your Genesis study, here's your host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann. Good evening and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Bible Study in the Book of Genesis. Tonight is study number 17 in Genesis chapter 33. And we were looking at verse 17 where Jacob journeyed to Succoth, built him a house and made booths. Um, last time we, we uh, discussed the building of a house, how Jacob's a type of Christ, and building the house would point to Christ building his own house who is made up of those that he has saved that become his family. Just as Noah built an ark to the saving of his house, so did Christ, um, through his atoning work, perform for uh, those that he had predestinated to receive it, provide salvation, the eternal safety and security of the salvation of God for his family, made up of everyone who whose name was recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life, as God determined, well, I'll save this one and that one and, and so forth. Well, um, now... We we find um, in Genesis thirty three seventeen. Uh, I'll read it again. And Jacob journeyed to Succoth and built him a house and made booths for his cattle. Therefore, the name of the place is called Succoth. And before we look at the word booths, uh, we're we're going to look at cattle. The Hebrew word translated as cattle is Strong's number 4735, and I would pronounce it as Mikna, Mikna, um, N-E-H kind of ending, uh, and it means really um, purchased animals, purchased animals or purchased possession. It would identify with livestock that is bought as far as this verse is concerned, but it's also translated as uh, simply possession in Genesis chapter 26. Genesis 26 in verse 14, we read, and, and this is referring to Isaac, it says, for he had possession of flocks. That The word possession, the English word Translated possession is the same word translated as cattle in our verse in Genesis 33, verse 17. So he had possession of flocks and possession, that's the same word again, and possession of herds and great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him. Isaac had cattle of flocks. Well, yeah, I guess you could say that. And cattle of herds, you see, it, it's pretty awkward. And, and and so the translators translated it as possession. They they were his bought livestock. And um, we also find this word is used in Genesis 49, um, having nothing to do with animals in Genesis chapter 49, starting in verse 31. Actually, I'll back up to verse 30 um, to get a fuller context. In Genesis 49, 30, in the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is before Mamre, in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought with the field of Ephron, the Hittite, for a possession of a burying place, there they buried Abraham and Sarah, his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah, his wife. And there I buried Leah. The purchase of the field and of the cave that is therein was from the children of Heth. 
It's the word purchase in verse 32 that is uh, the word we're looking at. Um, Strong's 4735, mikna, mikna. Um, the, the, the possession of the field and of the cave that is therein was from the children of Heth because Abraham purchased it from them, the children of Heth, and it became his possession. So we can see that, you know, there is more in view here than just simply cattle. Um, also, if we go to the book of Job, in Job chapter 1, we read, and I'll read verse 3, speaking of Job, his substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she-asses, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. The word substance is mikna. Job's substance was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke. Now, for one thing, we can see that the word cattle does not refer to steers. It can be uh, various animals livestock, bought animals, purchased animals that become um, the possession of their owner uh, as Job's substance. This was his wealth. Uh, they belonged to him. They, they were his possession. And um, now there is a related word, a related word, um, 4736, that, uh, again, uh, I would pronounce mikna. Now, the only difference is the vowel point. It, it has identical consonants as 4735, but it has a slightly different vowel point. It, the, the ending is, is the difference. Um, remember 4735, mikna, with it, N-E-H ending, mikna, and this word is mikna, N-A-H ending, and, and the vowel points were added later. So basically, it's the same word, and this word, 4736, is translated as bought, price, possession, purchase. So we can see with possession and purchase that it is very similar in its use as the word we're looking at. And this is the word, for example, we find in Genesis 23, when Abraham did buy the, the cave for a burying place. In Genesis 23, uh, verse 17 and 18, And the field of Ephron, which was in Machpelah, which was before Mamre, the field, and the cave which was therein, and all the trees that were in the field, that were in all the borders round about, were made sure unto Abraham for a possession. There's the word, but this is mikna, 4736, for a possession in the presence of the children of Heth before all that went in at the gate of the city. And I'll just look at one other place where this this uh, related Hebrew word is found. Genesis 17, in verses 12 and 13, where God gave the law of circumcision to Abraham. And it says in verse 12, And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man-child in your generations, he that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger which is not of thy seed, he that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And there the word bought used twice is this word. And, and, and so uh, as we read that Jacob made booze for his cattle, we, we can understand that. Um, for his possessions, the, 
the the livestock he possessed and this would point to the truth we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 19 and 20 what know ye not that your body is the temple of the holy ghost which is in you which ye have of god and ye are not your own for ye are bought with a price Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. That is, God owns those he has bought and purchased. They, they are his. And the purchase price was the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He bought us, he has redeemed us, and we belong to him. We are his servants, his people, and, and just as these cattle belong to Jacob, and Jacob owns them, they are his possession, uh, and, and, and so uh, we, we can see the cattle are a picture, a representation of the saved, of those that the Lord has uh, redeemed and granted his mercy and salvation to, and, and so that's why the booth, because we normally think of a booth in, in relationship to the Feast of Tabernacles, and that's what we're going to take a look at next uh, when, when we come back uh, to this verse. Again, uh, Genesis thirty-three seventeen. Jacob journeyed to Succoth. Succoth means booth, and built him a house, and made booths for his cattle. Therefore, the name of the place is called Sukkoth. So, so Jacob, a type of Christ, made booths, plural, for his cattle. That is, God has designed and built the booth for his elect people that will shelter them, especially we we understand at the time of the end when the Lord brings the spiritual fulfillment of the Feast of Tabernacles to pass. That is, he is fulfilling the Feast of Tabernacles in a similar manner as he fulfilled the Feast of Passover with Christ going to the cross or the Feast of First Fruits with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on that very day in AD 33. So so God has designed and made a booth for you and for me and for each of his elect people if we are truly his elect people. So that that's one helpful bit of information we can see. It, it, it's not that we're going to make the booth, uh, although uh, there there is that figure that's used the feast of tabernacles was uh, instituted to remember Israel's wilderness wandering for 40 years, and, and, and they dwelt in booths, in makeshift tents, and, and uh, uh, where they would just take whatever sticks or, or pieces of wood they could find, and, and they would build a structure to try and protect them from the heat of the day and, and from maybe storm and rain and, and so forth. Well, yes, it's true that, um, uh, that the Israelites themselves, even in observing the feast would, would go forth and, and find various wood and, uh, and branches to make their booth. But what it's pointing to is something God has made and God has done, uh, on behalf of his people, especially at the time of the end when there is spiritual fulfillment to this feast. So let's first go to Leviticus 23 and we'll see uh, the, the law of God concerning the Feast of Tabernacles as we read in Leviticus chapter 23 in verse 33. And Jehovah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month 
shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto Jehovah. So there is the, the timing for the Feast of Tabernacles. And then if we go down to verse 39 and pick up there. It says also in the 15th day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto Jehovah seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath, and ye shall take you on the first day the bows of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the bows of thick trees, and willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice before Jehovah your God seven days. And ye shall keep it a feast unto Jehovah seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Ye shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. Now, uh, I want to stop there because we just read something significant in Leviticus 23, 42, that would tie in with the spiritual dimension, the spiritual meaning of this feast. Again, it says, ye shall dwell in booths seven days. Well, who's going to dwell in booths? All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths or tabernacles. And, and, and historically, okay, the People of Israel, the children of Israel, would be the ones observing this feast. No problem. But spiritually, who are those who are Israelites born? You know what? Remember what God says concerning the physical descendants of Abraham in the book of Romans, in Romans chapter 2, in the last two verses. Uh, verses 28 and 29, we read, Therefore he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. The true Jew is circumcised in the heart, in the spirit, uh, inwardly and and the only way that's possible is with a spiritual circumcision the that only God can perform and and that is speaking of being born again receiving a new heart and a new spirit and in that case for that individual whether they be Jew or Gentile that person becomes of spiritual Israel. They now are circumcised and, and, and they have fulfilled what the law of circumcision, the, the ceremonial law that God gave uh, to Abraham that you must circumcise your children, um, that law pointed to circumcision of the heart or inward circumcision where, wherein one's sins are cut off. And physical descendants of Abraham who experience outward physical circumcision and yet never had their sins cut off. They, that is, they never became saved. Christ did not die for them. Christ did not save them. They were never born again. They are therefore not a true Jew in God's sight that they are not of the spiritual children of Israel or spiritual Israel, and they are not an Israelite born in that sense. So when we, we read this in Leviticus 23, verse 42, God is telling us regarding the, the spiritual observance of the Feast of Tabernacles that you will dwell in a booth, but those that will dwell in the booth must be born again. Ye must be born again. That's what Christ said to Nicodemus. And, and Nicodemus was stunned. He, he had never heard such a thing. And, and yet that's the teaching of the Bible, really, from beginning 
through N. We must experience the new birth in the spiritual realm or we will die. We will, we will die in our sins. We'll not be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven, into the promised land. God's promise was that to Abraham and to his seed, Christ in the first instance, but all those counted for the seed in Christ, spiritual Israel, circumcised in heart. Everyone, everyone, male or female, doesn't matter. Um, they, they're all children of God and have received of the spiritual circumcision performed by God on them. And, and therefore, they alone are qualified to dwell in the booth, in the booth that Jacob made for his cattle, that Christ has made specifically for them, for that particular elect child of God. Thank you for joining us for eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann. For more studies and information, visit our website at www.ebiblefellowship.org. Until our next Bible study, may the Lord's perfect will be done.